In this Excel video, I want to talk about conditional formatting and some of the features that are available to you. Um, actually, a very interesting topic. Now, I've got some data in here, um, and I've got a total. I've got some totals here, right? So this is just our basic production sheet, okay? So this is the production for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for various employees. Um, there are different things that you can do uh, right here in conditional formatting. So um, I'm going to start uh, by just coming in here. And this is your menu. Now, conditional formatting versus relational formatting. The top two here are, are more of conditions. So um, greater than, less than, between, all right? Or here, it'll give you the top 10%, bottom 10%, above average, below average. Fast, easy, works really, really well. Uh, so here I can say if they're greater than, um, so, select a range first and then I'll come back here and I'll say highlight if greater than and let's say here it just randomly chose 166 I'm just gonna say if it's 200 you can stick with what they offer or you can choose something else or you can go all the way to custom format and you can choose whatever you want font uh, border fill I mean you can whatever you'd like literally and then say okay if it's over 200, I want it to look like that. So now, anything in this range that ends up being over 200 will be that color. That fast, that easy. It, it's We used to use if statements in order to identify things. I mean, we can still use if statements. That'll probably be in another lesson. But this is exactly like an if statement. And it allows you to have things stand out very quickly, very easily. And uh, if you want to clear the rules, you can just, I believe, clear the rules. Oh, maybe select the text first and then... Clear the rule, and then it's gone. Um, and so just so you know, you've got <clears throat> all these options. It could be between, it could be above, greater than, text that contains, a date that occurs, duplicate values. Um, I'm not going to go on, but you just you know, you might want to take a look at what you have available here. Above average, below average. Now, um, very very useful stuff. All right, so format cells that are above average. And it's that easy, right? It's already showing you. Now, in the past, you would have had to find the average and then do, again, an if statement. So if I just if I just do the average here instead, I'm just going to do a quick... I keep hitting the wrong button here. A quick average. There we go. Okay, so the average is 180. So if I look at my answers, of course, it's right. All right, so formatted that properly. So again, to get rid of it, all you need to do is come here and clear the rule from select the text, and that's gone. You can also do a quick analysis from the bottom right-hand corner here. So from here, you've got data bars that you can choose, which is very cool, right? So it's just showing you which ones are small, which ones aren't. Color. Uh, and again, it's uh, the greener they are, the better they are, the redder they are, the worse they are. And icon sets, right? So if they're really good, they got the green trending up. If they're kind of in the middle, they got the orange kind of in, in the middle. The, the And then if they're trending down, they're red, right? So quick, easy way to identify the data in that selection. And I'm once again going to just clear the rules here. Relational now. Um, refer to these. So we, we kind of saw those in the quick, right? But um, if we're looking for conditional, these are what we refer to as conditional. These kind of relate to one another, so they compare one to another. So you got your data bars here, okay, which we saw. You've got your color scales here, which we also saw earlier. It's just giving you a preview here. Kind of a good, good, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly kind of thing, right? So here, again, it's giving me a preview. So very neat, relatively new. It's only been around for a couple of versions. This is some very exciting stuff. Allows you to dress up your document, your Excel spreadsheet very easily, very quickly. 
If you got ratings, if you got Consumer Report magazine, you'll recognize these. Our little charts, little built-in graphs. Very exciting, very special stuff, I think. If you want to create something from scratch, a new rule, you can also do that. So they give you some parameters here. So if you say that, all right, I want, uh, I want to do something to everything that is either above average or below average, and you can choose above or below. And uh, wow, even um, equal or above, equal or below, and even two standard deviations above or below. So this is pretty impressive stuff. So just to keep it simple, let's say I say above, and I want everything that's above to be with blue and okay, and then okay. And now it's quickly and easily done that. It's very similar to what we had over here, but just so you know, you have the ability to create them from scratch. I kept it really, really simple. My new rule, really simple. If you want to manage the rules, you can come in here and you can edit that rule. You can change it so that it does something else or that the format is different. You can also delete the rule from here so that it doesn't exist anymore. And when you come back to your sheet, it'll be gone. Um, I could have also cleared the rule from here. So create new rules, delete rules, clear the rules. Um, one thing that they want you to know um, is that if you set a new rule, um, let's say that you say the greater than, and I'll go with that. You can also come back to manage rules here and you can say, if it's true, don't test these cells for anything else, all right? Leave those cells alone so they can't be double tested. Uh, I haven't got a real good example for you i'm sorry but if the test asks you to stop if true this is where you do it i'm kind of teaching to the test here i feel bad but i can't really come up with anything logical as far as the real world is concerned with this so i'll just hit apply and okay and just remember that you can delete that rule or clear the rule at any time spark lines um a little similar but not the same uh, they have to do with uh, I'm gonna get rid of these totals first of all and so that these can look better and so they're called spark lines again relatively new so I'm gonna go to insert here and I'm going to either way you're gonna need to let it know something so I'm gonna select the data first okay and then from here I can ask for different types of spark lines I'm gonna ask for column and it's going to ask me, where do you want the answer to this, right? And I want the answer to be here, right, in H5. So I just clicked in H5 rather than type it out. And then I'm going to hit enter. So now it gave me a little chart that describes this range of data. Fast, easy, and kind of cool. And I just copied that to other cells, and it's giving me that. If you decide that you didn't like the design, you want to go with a different design, you can go with the line design right and the line design is doing a great job except for when a situation like this one where i didn't have any data this person called in sick that day it doesn't like none null values i guess this little shape so from this particular case i, I prefer this because at least it's showing me that there is nothing there and win loss i believe will only work when you've got negative values because if I, I choose that it's uh, it's showing me it's all or nothing so that's probably good for positive or negative values. You can change the colors. You can change um, the high point, low point colors. You've got a bunch of different features that you can um, choose in here. Uh, I don't believe the test is gonna get too far into um, your options. I believe they'll get into colors um, and that's about it and different variations that you can choose. Now, my in my first example, now, to delete this, delete doesn't work. I'm hitting my delete button, nothing is happening. If you want to get rid of these things, you have to come here and you have to clear. I don't know why, you just do. So now, I did it by selecting the whole range. You can also do the opposite. You can start from here, and again, I'm going to insert, and let's say I ask for a spark. Now it's asking for the range. Right? So I, it, I told it that I want the answer there, and now it's asking for the range. And rather than type it in, you can just click and drag, right? like I just did, and then hit OK. So you start it by either selecting the range or selecting the cell in which you want the answer and you just gotta fill in the other blanks, the information that it's asking you for. And 
yeah, your fill handle works and you can complete that. Very cool, very fancy. Uh, you know, in the past we would create a graph with this information and put it next to it. And, but here we're kind of sort of getting a graph for each individual row, which is very interesting. So um, those, that's a lesson on conditional formatting. Um, we got conditional, relational, and then we had the um, spark lines as they call them.